Should we race to see who cries first? Onions never make me cry. Really? Carl, when you've chopped as many onions as I have, you never cry. Oh, so it's kind of like sailors with their sea legs. You sail so much, you never get sick. Exactly. Hmm. I never, ever get seasick. Oh, so you're a seasoned sailor then? Oh, no, 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 no. I take grab all. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Steve, I think you have a tip for us about caramelized onions. I do, Carl, indeed. When I'm doing them, I always do maybe double or triple the amount of them, and then I would refrigerate them. And the beautiful part about that, you can then use them on st in stews, you can use them on sandwiches, Maybe put some in an omelette as well, first thing in the morning for your breakfast. But uh, I always like to keep some in the fridge, but always in a sealed container so the aroma doesn't go through your fridge as well. So, so caramelized onions will, will hold up well in a freezer? Uh, absolutely. No, not in the freezer, in the fridge, Carl. Oh, in, in the, the fridge. fridge. Yes, oh, sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. Fridge, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and how long would they last in the fridge? Well, because you've got quite a bit of oil in there, up to six to seven days, you know, okay. perfectly, perfectly. Excellent. All nice and crisp as well. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Well, coming up on the program today, we have a father and son duo, Mark and Jacob Critch. Mark, of course, is the star of This Hour Has 22 Minutes, and Jacob is a budding music artist. And what are we cooking with Mark and Jacob? We're going to be making a beautiful beef stew with some butternut squash in it. Mm. Oh, that's a hearty dish. Mm -hmm. And Chef Chris Chafe of the Gypsy Tea Room is with us. He's going to be making a Cajun shrimp skillet. Mm. So stay tuned. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. And here we are with the father and son team, Mark and Jacob Critch. And it's great to have you both with us. Oh, wonderful Especially to be Especially you, you, Jacob, because it's your first time on the show. It is. And are you all ready for your very first cooking lesson? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> don't. Uh, he looks nervous. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're not going. You're not going to bite. He's not going to bite. You're not going to burn yeah. yourself yeah. or anything. Yeah. So uh, just tell us now what we're, we're all going to be doing. Well, actually, I'm not going to be doing very much because no, since no. we have all this, you know, free, free labor here, here <laughs> we're going to put these guys to work. I'll just stand here and do nothing. We're, we're going to be making a beautiful beef stew with some butternut squash, some uh, sun-dried tomatoes in there, a little bit of garlic, and uh, we will be putting a little bit of wine in, which I'll let you do the quantities, Mark, and okay. uh, the alcohol will burn off, you know, of course, so yeah. that kind of a thing. So let's get started. I'll put a little bit of oil into our pan. And uh, away we go. There we go with our oil. And then we'll put our beef in there. I'll get you to season it a little bit there as well, Jacob. Nice big oh, chunks of stewing beef there. Nice and lean. Okay, so you can start to stir with this. Okay. And uh, feel free to just put a little bit of salt and pepper in. Oh, <laughs> popping. Okay, no problem. No retreat, Jacob. No retreat. No retreat. I'll go till my hand burns off. Yeah. This is fine. You'll be the first critch with an actual skill. Yeah. Oh, if you can do this. The first non carny <laughs> There you go. We're okay then? <laughs> yeah. Just get a little more gently. gently yeah. A little more gently. Yeah, okay. You don't have to attack it. Just yeah, less hockey. I'll, uh... It's dead. The cow is dead. <laughs> it's playoff season. No. Yeah, we always make sure the cow is dead before we bring it in. This is good. Uh, okay, we'll just leave it there. Yeah, I like your passing. <laughs> yes, more. yes. Actually, you can keep that. I'll keep I'm it going. Put that. No, no, this is for you to hold a. Oh, yeah, okay. while well, you, you can you put it on the other side if you like. Whatever. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Just to stabilize it. Yeah. And then you just uh, move it around a little bit. There we go. Ah, uh, now there we, we got, got it. I'm a born natural here. Like Bruno Gerusi, a fine so, uh, Canadian. I know you like to cook, right? I do enjoy cooking, yeah. yes. And clearly you haven't taught your son a thing. <laughs> well, no, yeah, Jacob is, is, is pretty used to... What's uh, the deal with that? Yeah, no, he, he, he's more of a... a uh, uh, I, I, I'm the short order cook and, and he's a customer. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> there we yeah. go. We've got our heat down there now. Yeah. I just consider myself staff in the house, okay. you know? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 
So we've got our onions okay. in there and we'll put a little bit of garlic and I'm going to cut out these uh, sun dried tomatoes as well. Perfect. You, you hear that? That's the, th that's the sound of things coming under control. True. Yes, yeah. Coming under control. It was very exciting though for the yes. viewer at home. <laughs> like, oh my God, this is the one where they burn down Carl's house. <laughs> And then you're like, oh no, it's calmed down. So now it's some, we've got some yeah. conflicts and yeah. some resolution. And... So Jacob, um, when did you when did you first get interested in music? Was this something that started when you were really young, or? Well, I've always kind of been into instruments. You know, I picked up a guitar in grade four, and then I just started learning piano, electric guitar, and like four, three or four years ago, I started producing. So I got some gear to record music at home. Wow. And I've just been developing that ever since. With the right. mixing and the mastering and all that good stuff. Wow. So uh, you're a real modern musician. Yes, very because, contemporary. Uh, you, yeah. You've uh, mastered the electronics of the whole process as well, I guess. Yeah, it's more electronics than anything these days, yeah. I would say. Yeah. So, Mark, uh, did he inherit any musical talent from you? No, no, not, no, no. His mom's a good singer. Okay. Uh, I, I, I generally sing a bit, but usually as, as somebody else making fun of Al Doyle or something. But, um, no, he, he kind of... I was, you know, I thought that when he first asked for a guitar, I thought, okay, well, this is going to be a thing where he goes up in his room and goes, dilly doo, dilly doo, dilly doo. It's not that interesting. So he had an acoustic guitar of mine that he was learning on. He said, I want to get an electric guitar. I'm like, oh, I think you should learn acoustic. He said, no, no, I want to get an electric guitar. I'm like, all right, I'll tell you what. You, this week, learn, play, learn to play any four songs, start to finish, and uh, I'll get you whatever electric guitar you want. And Four went, songs? Yeah, and he went up and he learned them. And he came oh, down and he's like, Imagine. Yeah, and he did and he did some he did like a day tripper, like I'm a big Beatles nerd, so he did that and I was like, Okay, all right, fine. <laughs> it was all part of my plan. <laughs> yeah. And then he came and he said, I want to get like a synthesizer, like a big keyboard with weighted keys. We'll just need to sweat a little bit more now. And sure. I said, Okay. Yeah, it's all good. And I said, yeah, we're good. Well, you learned to play like three songs on this right. crappy little keyboard. Right. And he did, and then he did that. And I went, ah, I thought it would work the second time. <laughs> so now I'll never make a bet with him again. Yeah. Well, clearly he's, he has tenacity. Oh yeah, it's no, and what's the thing? You gotta have dry. Pardon? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. All what great. I've done had a little bit of thyme in there. We've got our sun-dried tomatoes and some Lovely. rosemary. And um, Mark, I'll just get you to put that pasta into the dish okay. there as well. I, I'll hand Mark the pasta. But you'll hand Mark that's the pasta. That's, that's, that's and then we can add some red wine into the pan <laughs> as well. Look at this, oh my God. This is so good. The fine Newfoundland <laughs> traditional form of cooking, boiling. Boiling. <laughs> when I was a kid, you didn't come home for supper until the windows were steamed over. <laughs> yeah. You knew, yeah. Oh, it's cooked. So, did you have this here? You can just put a little bit put in Put a there. little bit of that yeah, in Just there. a little bit in Okay, there. olive oil. Much better. There we go. Perfect. Ta-da. And you can put, actually, Mark, while we're at it, we'll just put a little bit of red wine into our pan. Hello, oh. baby. Let's do it. And we'll reduce that down a little bit as well. Wee oui, wee. Oui. No more is that good? Oh, a little bit more. That's that'll be fine. That's good. Perfect. Okay. Give it a stir, Jake. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a stir. Stir it up there. And fold the pan. Fantastic. And then we'll add our squash into there. Our butternut squash. And then. Oh, that's colourful. It's coming down there. Here's the oh, colour. Yeah. Yeah. So Jake, uh, you participated in something called the RPM Challenge in 2014. That's true, well, yes. What, what, uh, tell us about the RPM Challenge, what's uh, that? So the RPM Challenge, it's basically, uh, you've got to make an album in one month. So it's kind of a, like a recording wow. arts kind of thing, to test your own skill. Yeah. Um, but for me, I wasn't very experienced, so after doing that, it kind of like uh, was a bit of a boot camp for learning to record my own songs and write my own songs and so it was a it was a learning experience so I mean, you actually produced in essence a, an album right yeah full record had to be yeah. uh, 10 songs and uh, you had to do all the work yourself wow. as far as producing recording writing all that stuff right okay and he just uh, just won the an arts and letters competition right yeah, I did. I did the arts and letters, so I submitted a song for that. Excellent. Congratulations. Yeah. Amazing. I've got to go uh, perform my song mm -hmm. in a few days there. Yeah. So you can now sing all about beef and... Uh, oh, that's going to be my next so, record. Yeah, I can see. It's yeah. going to be a hit. I, I, know <laughs> you, I know your dad here can write. Uh, do you ever consult with him on lyrics or anything? 
uh, it'll turn out to be some Trudeau song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if what I'm ready Ryan, to enter yeah. the political space. What Russian yeah, Trudeau? Right. Yeah. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Indeed, indeed, Step indeed. in the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what about your musical heroes? Who are some of your? I've got quite a few. Um, I'm really into the R and B and soul stuff. So I like oh. uh, my number one guy's Brian McKnight. Okay. I don't know if you remember him from the '90s. Mm -hmm. He's had him back mm -hmm. at one stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Usher, Neo, mm -hmm. you know Justin Bieber, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Stevie Wonder, all those kind of guys. Oh, yeah. 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 What about you, Mark? You have musical heroes. Oh, I, I all kinds of stuff. I mean, I was a big, uh, uh, a big Beatles kind of nerd. You know, I'm into that yeah. stuff. But also like you know old stuff because my dad was a fair bit older when he had me so anything yeah. from I don't know from Sinatra to like John McCormick and yeah. I love all kinds of trad stuff I'm, yeah. I'm all over the place yeah yeah well uh, this looks like it's coming along nicely I must indeed, say indeed it is cool yeah indeed now I turned up the heat because That's I fine. thought it had gotten a little bit too low and then what and, I'm going to do I'm wondering about this pasta because nothing seems to be happening here right, okay, okay, when it comes to the boil you're, yeah. you're falling down on I'm the down. well I didn't I got so wrapped up in the conversation <laughs> ruined again <laughs> <laughs> And that's our sauce going into there now, and that's going Lovely. to come through. Yep. So How is this different from a can of Fraser's meatballs and gravy? <laughs> How dare you! I'm just saying, that's, that's what I know. <laughs> this is all natural, man. All oh, natural. I see. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Fraser's cheaper, man. He's got a point. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to turn this down a little, little bit now. Yep. Since it's come up a bit. Yeah. Uh, stir that. Uh, I give that a stir? Just a little stir. Just a little yeah, stir. cooker. It's hard to get used to. Anyway, I'm going to go down to the wine cellar. Great. And get some, because I know you like wine. Mm -hmm. And get, uh, I guess I'm, I guess we're going to end up with a red wine. Because this, we put red wine in it and it's uh -huh. beefy and yeah. Sounds robust, good to us. So, yeah. Carry on. All right. <laughs> As you can see now, what we're doing now, um, Jacob would pop that into the oven for about two and a half hours. And Great. Cook it nice and slow at around about 275, 300. So right. be nice and tender then, and then we'll serve that with a little bit of our pasta and some crusty bread. So really beautiful. Yep. Hi, Jennifer. Hello. Nice Carl, to see you? you. Great. So we have a nice wintry kind of dish today. It's a butternut and a butternut squash and beef stew. So what would Pizantes and Segovia recommend we pair? With it. Well, that sounds delicious, and because it's uh, stew and beef, rich, so we want wines that are rich as well, uh, but also have nice tannins. Uh, so I have three great suggestions for you. The first one is uh, Portuguese wine, Vega Duro, a blend of three different grape varieties, traditional to Portugal, and also has lots of awards, uh, 90 Parker Points, uh, Gold Medal, Mundo Vinis, and Best Buy but wine enthusiasts. Mm. But it's delicious, full of rich uh, red fruit and great price point as well. Okay. Bright new to our market mm. and it's just below $20, $19.78. Okay. My second option uh, or suggestion, if I may say, is uh, a beautiful wine from uh, France and is um, from Côte d'Uron, uh, Domaine saint Gaillan excellent GSM we call it because it's mainly Grenache so again it has forest floor lots of uh, character and rich uh, black fruit so wonderful wine as well and it's about uh, thirty dollars great pairing and the final suggestion for this dish is Dori Reserva it's a beautiful wine love Portuguese wines as you know mm. because they, they have so much to offer the great value and a great quality. This one is a blend and uh, one of the great varieties is Portuguese and the other two are international. So it has Syrah and Cabernet Sauvignon and it's just fantastic, full of character and complexity and will stand and, and go fantastic with your dish. Mm. Of it. I like the name too. Yeah. Okay, could you just run through the price points again? Yes, uh, 1978, uh, the one is uh, 29 and uh, Dory Reserva is $35. Okay, well you know what? Um, I've kind of figured out over the years that my palate is much like Robert Parker's oh, when it comes okay. to wine. <laughs> so, uh, 
Um, I'm going to I'm going to pick this one. Okay, it's, it sounds great like choice. It, it sounds like um, he liked it a lot. So yes. I'm sure I will too. I'm it's like sure. movies, you know. I have my favorite movie <laughs> yes. reviewers. Yes. Uh, so I agree with go. you. Okay. Absolutely. I'm going to go. Thank you. Okay. Now a beautiful beef and butternut squash stew. It's been in the oven now for two and a half hours. Nicely stewed. So lots of butternut on there, nice and soft. We'll put some nice crispy crunchy bread on the side and let's go and see Jacob and Carl and Mark and see if they're jazzing or not. Okay, there we go. And Jacob, we, uh, we've we poured you some excellent Perrier. <laughs> uh, Perfect. <laughs> 20, A drink of choice. 2017 vintage. Oh, very good. <laughs> mm, wow. <laughs> uh, now let's have a taste. Mm. All right. It looks really good. It certainly does. Nice slow stewing in the oven. Mm. Mm. That is lovely. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That is a very, very good stew. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah. Excellent job, everybody. Yeah, well, well done. Very well <laughs> stirred. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure was all mine. I had no hand in it. I, yeah. just, I yeah. just observed today. Yeah, mm. You were just the director. Yeah. You've got a little bit of gravy I on do, your I chin do. there. Oh, I, which is I a good problem to have. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Thank I you for bringing that up. Yeah, I just thought I would bring yes. that up. Yeah. So um, now we should mention you have two sons, right? Mm -hmm. Who, and your other boy is. My other son is Will, and mm -hmm. he is uh, 13 years old. I was going to Brother Rice, and he's very creative as well, very funny, and um, a, just a hilarious, great guy, really good mm -hmm. student. So good I've been very him. lucky. Yeah. Say. You have indeed. Yeah. So. Um, do, do you and Will ever get embarrassed by your dad's antics? I'm um, thinking in particular of that photo bombing with uh, his shirt right. off on Signal Hill behind yeah. the Prime Minister. Tell him that story. <laughs> well, I'm more or less just glazed over to it now, uh, desensitized to the embarrassment. Yeah, <laughs> after being embarrassed so many times. Yeah. Mm. You kind of, yeah, kind of. You were really embarrassed that day. I wasn't you? embarrassed. No, I just doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. He can take off his shirt behind yeah. the prime minister. It's just like, oh, oh that's here dead, we go again. You know. <laughs> I wasn't even surprised. Yeah. Well, think of the memories in years to come. Oh, but, yes. of, but of course, uh, your dad's been on Twenty Two ever since you were born, right? Yeah, I mean, so it was like two thousand three or something. Yeah, yeah. so, so uh, I was yeah. like a couple of years old. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you probably don't remember me doing anything else. That's right. Not really. No. Wow. Yep. Mm. It's pretty much always been tuning in to CBC. Yeah, <laughs> that go. faded off, of course. Yeah. 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 Um, now you had a when Danny Williams was premier. You did a yeah. lot of stuff with Danny. Oh yeah. You had a relationship, you know, going there. Uh, what about Dwight Ball? Dwight, uh, not so much. I mean, poor, poor Dwight. I, I kind of like. I feel bad. I feel like yeah, it's kind of like a sin. He's giving a hard time, you know. <laughs> and it's kind of like you don't want to make fun too much because you right. don't want to be the person who cracks him, <laughs> um, you know. And be, uh, but I, I have uh, been. Uh, my friend Shama Jumder has a great event, the gathering out out in uh, Burlington mm -hmm. Bay Road area, and we did a piece myself and Dwight together. Where I dressed up as Dwight, and he was a great sport. I must say, he really took it well. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Now, you've been having a lot of fun doing Donald Trump. Absolutely. I would imagine that for comedians like uh, yourself, uh, he must have been like a gift from the comedy gods. Well, it's kind of thing. It's like, it reminds me of when Rob Ford, that whole thing happened. We start doing parody, and you think maybe, well, I don't want to do it again because you're doing the same thing over and over. Yeah. And uh, then all of a sudden you realize, well, you can't top it. Every time you open up the paper, <laughs> it's like, he did what? He <laughs> said what? Yeah. I couldn't write that. So it gets more and more ridiculous, you know? Yeah. And I've had a chance to go to the States as dressed as him and to, yeah. to New York, walking around into uh, Washington and then down at the border at the fence. So it's been it's been quite a little journey, yeah. Yeah, and I don't think it's over yet. No. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks. Guys, for being on the Cheers. show, it Absolutely. was lovely Cheers. to see you again, Mark, and to Great meet to you, Jacob, you. and all the best to you in your uh, career. Thank you. And coming up next, we'll welcome Chef Chris Chafe of the Gypsy Tea Room, who's going to do Cajun Shrimp in a Skillet for us. Stay tuned. The Gypsy Tea Room and Evu are two of the biggest and most popular restaurants in the city of St. John's. Um, one of the reasons they're so popular is because they serve great food, and the reason they have great food is because over the years they've had great chefs, including our guest, who is the multiple award-winning chef, Chris Chafe. And it's great to have you on the show again. Great to be back again. And um, I'm really looking forward to this dish because I love shrimp, and I see 
shrimp there. A shrimp <laughs> and a buffet of ingredients <laughs> as well. I mean, what, what, what are we going to be making, Chris? So today we're doing a, a take on, say, a Cajun shrimp or a mm -hmm. Creole shrimp. Okay. Uh, so it's just we'll make a quick Creole sauce. We saute the, the shrimp in the sauce and finish with a little like a Louisiana style remoulade and some uh, fresh lime. Okay. Um, so so we'll get started. I'll turn the little stove on here. So we're just going to start with a little bit of butter in the pan. Okay. Let that melt. And then we're going to go with what they call a Cajun Holy Trinity of ingredients, right? Okay. So your onion, celery, bell pepper um, to start. Okay, nicely done. Yeah. I see they got them beautifully cut into a nice brunoise there. You must have a very special knife. <laughs> yeah, that's my baby. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. So we put that in, we're just going to saute that and some garlic as well. Okay. No shortage of that, that's for sure. No, the Creole food, like I said, they, uh, I think you said your holy trinity, your yeah. bell pepper, and, celery, and onion. With and the uh, Creole food, the, the trinity is, uh, it includes green bell pepper. Green right? bell pepper. Green yeah, bell pepper. Exactly. Not red, not yellow. Green. Oh, green, yeah. So let that start to cook down yeah. a little. We're going to add some diced tomato Just, as well. Okay, yeah. It's very nice. A little bit of green onion. Okay. No shortage of those ingredients for sure. No. <laughs> and you have what, about 150 seats in the restaurant now? Yeah, at, yeah. at Gypsy, we're so, somewhere in that range. And yeah. then uh, 60 at Evo. Oh, is that right? Okay, yeah. so. So you must have a full brigade and everybody going uh, full tilt it's on a good night. It's quite yes, a large yeah. team, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so then we're going to go into our spices once that starts to saute a little. Okay. So we have a little bit of ground coriander. Yeah. And that's fresh coriander, is it? Yeah. Yep. Ground, yeah. Ground up. Uh, smoked paprika, one of my favorites. Mmm. Yeah. You can see that in a, in yeah, a little, little bit of cayenne pepper, depending on how hot you like it. Yeah. I, like, I like spices. Well, it so. is, yeah, it yeah. is Creole, isn't it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And dried oregano. Well, okay. Just a little bit of that is very strong. So yep, yep. Much. Pungent. I understand. Yeah. So you smell, you start to smell the room fills <laughs> yeah. with the scent there now. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay, and then the last thing we do, we just a little bit of chicken stock just to kind of help it cook through. Yep. And the smallest touch of Worcestershire sauce. Really bring those flavors through now, won't it? That's, that's coming together. Okay. And then we had our prawns, so we'll go about four prawns. Okay. So you're just going to cook those in the sauce. It's not going to take long at all, is it? You just want them no. al dente, you don't want them to turn or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, and your sauce will start to, as your liquid reduces and your vegetable soften right. up, it'll start to stick to your, yeah. stick to your, yeah. your prawns. That's a meal within itself, isn't it? Well, it's, it's, it's surely a great appetizer. Yeah. 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 We, we serve this at the, at the restaurant. It is, it is a very popular dish. Um, mm. Add a little more stuff. So, so to cook it, along. Yeah. Really infuse those flavors into the shrimp. There we go. And how are we going to serve this? I see you've got a small yep. cast iron skillet so, there. Yeah, we do. Uh, Cast iron prawns, what we call them on the menu. So we'll go in the cast iron. Um, mm -hmm. we're, on TV, we have no salamander here. So usually <laughs> okay, we'll so. blast them in the salamander real quick, but we're just going to skip that part here today. Yeah. And a salamander is like a broiler. Yeah, broiler, like you say. Yeah. So if you were to do um, it at home, you can use your broiler. That's yeah. right. Your own, yeah. yeah. Or you can use a blowtorch. Blowtorch works <laughs> as well. Okay, so they're all. So uh, did you leave the, the tails on? Yeah, I leave okay. the. Uh, just uh, we. Clean most of the shell off and obviously devein the prawns, but we need yep. a little bit of the tail on just to right. pick up and pull yep. it out. That makes a nicer presentation. It does well, indeed, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Almost cooked. <laughs> and you're going to garnish that with some fresh. Yeah, we have some microgreens there from the organic farm in Portugal Cove and just some, some lime slice, and this is a remoulade. So it's a Louisiana style oh. remoulade. This is mayo, a little bit of mustard, some. Uh, some dill pickle herbs, uh, again, cayenne, paprika, onion, garlic. Yeah. Okay. That's a yeah, very, that's a very famous uh, sauce. Yeah. So then we just going to arrange mm. the prawns with the sauce. Into the pan. Into our cast iron skillet. Might want to use tongs at home. My fingers yeah. don't feel the heat anymore. No. <laughs> Does any chef feel the fingers no. anymore? We don't want to leave that. We'll put that in there as well. Beautiful. I like the presentation there. That skillet there. And I usually kind of try to fill the little sides here with some nice. remoulade. Yeah. Dip it yeah. In. 
That's beautiful. Beautiful, Chris. Yeah. Really, really nice. And finish it off with a little slice of lime. Lime on it. Yeah. Some wedges in there. There we go. Microgreens on it. Mm -hmm. Microgreens. And Carl, I think you're ready to Here taste, are you not? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. It looks, looks kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I'm not, actually, I'm not because it is really hot. hot yeah. Um, but it looks beautiful, and I, I know it tastes great. I'm <laughs> going to taste it after. But anyway, thanks for being on the show, Chris. Thank you. And that's it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic.